In this last section, we're going to talk about exchange rate risk. Um, exchange rate risk is the risk that when the cash flow is translated from one currency to um, back to your home currency, the value has changed. So this is not the risk that the size of the cash flow or your ability to collect cash flow from a customer change. Um, all of those happen as expected, but simply the translation, the exchange rate itself has changed and therefore impacted the value of your, of your project. And this is a very everyday occurrence for any business, large or small, because no matter what size your business is, there's a good chance that either you have a customer who is from a foreign country, or more likely one of your suppliers is from a foreign country, and you may have to pay the supplier in, in the domestic currency. And even if you don't pay your supplier in domestic currency, you know that the cost or the price that your supplier will charge you will be impacted by the exchange rate. We're going to look into different types of exchange rate risk. First, we're going to look at the short run. Short-term exposure uh, it comes from the day-to-day -day fluctuation in exchange rate. And if you have a um, contract to buy or sell products denominated in a foreign currency, your company is exposed to the short-term exchange rate risk. The way to manage this risk or the best way is to enter into a forward contract. And because in a forward contract, you can fix the exchange rate today. So the exchange, you may not get the spot rate today, but you can agree to a rate sometime in the future. By entering into a forward agreement, then you will know exactly in US dollar what your cost or what your revenue will be. If your company is larger, then and you have exposure to many different countries, then having individual forward contracts uh, may not be as efficient. In that case, you may want to use currency options so that you can lock in exchange rates and such that if the exchange rate goes the wrong direction, you, you can exercise your option and therefore keep your exchange rate under control. If the exchange rate moves towards to your favor, you can just let the contract the option expired and you can benefit um, from the movement in exchange rates. In the long run, the primary risk for now due to exchange rate fluctuations have to do with the relative economic conditions between the two countries. And those are much harder to those kind of risks are much harder to manage. Um, the reason is because it's so long, or it's just a long run exposure, it's difficult to find um, a contract. Um, and in fact, you as the firm may not know the precise amount of cash flow that you can expect to generate in such a long run. So it's hard to, hard, to, hard to know exactly how much you're getting in inflows and how much you're getting in outflows. So the increased uncertainty makes, risk, uh, makes risk exchange rate risk management much more difficult. In the long run, and you see this um, strategy employed by companies all the time, and that is they will, either, they will both borrow or raise capital in the foreign currency so that your financing and operation using local currency. So again, this, this, and because this is the best way to manage long-term exposure, having a efficient and function, well-functioning foreign exchange market and capital market is essential to economic development of any country. And this is why developing countries really focus on strengthening their financial system because that's the only way they can attract investment and attract um, businesses. The third form of exposure is called a translation exposure. Translation is unrelated to the actual economic operation or the day-to-day -day operation of the firm. Translation has to do with translating the foreign operation results to U.S. accounting system. So there's no conversion of cash flow. There's no exchange of goods. This is simply a translation of um, foreign financial reporting. The U.S. accounting regulation requires that all cash flows be converted at the current exchange rate. And if there's any gain or loss due to currency, they have to be reported and recorded, both reported and recorded, in the shareholder's um, equity account. So which means that it does not affect the 
the company's net income, but it does affect the company's accumulated retained earnings. So um, in theory, translation exposure is a non-cash event. However, it does affect the information being um, being reported. So there's some controversy in terms of whether or not a company should hatch against translation exposure because this is not a real economic event, it's simply a reporting uh, incident. So if a company expends money to hatch against translation exposure, that is real cash being spent to, to hatch against an event that is simply a reporting event. So that that is subject to debate. Because some one one argument is that the information and the signal that is conveyed um, is important. Um, a second argument is that investors are not able to distinguish between translation and economic exposure. Um, and but the counter argument is that investors are capable of distinguishing between translation and economic exposure, and therefore spending money to hedge against ex translation exposure is a waste of a firm's resources. So that, that debate is not settled. Um, the first two exposures, both the short run and the long run exposures are well um, understood. And even though they're challenging and difficult to manage, um, we can all agree that they have significant economic consequence and need to be managed. Translation exposure is not an economic event, and therefore, whether or not um, it need to be managed is more subject to debate. To summarize, large companies oftentimes will need to um, specifically manage exchange rate risk uh, because they have many they they have exposure to multiple currencies, and for a large company like that, they need to consider its net exposures rather than hedging each currency individually. So for ex so if the company does business with Europe, it both sells to European uh, customers and purchases from European suppliers, then it doesn't make sense for the company to hedge its revenue and also hedge its expense. It's much more, ef much more efficient for the company to hedge the net profit, the difference between the revenue and cost that is denominated in the euro. The reason for that is because if you hedge individual currencies, it can be very expensive. And if you, if you ignore the interrelationships and the cross correlation between currencies, you can actually end up increasing your risk instead of re reducing your risk. If your company is a very large company, there's a good chance that you have a special um, exchange currency department whose only job is to hedge currencies. The last risk that we want to talk about and related to international finance is political risk. Political risk is defined as the change in the value of a company due to political events that happen in other countries. Um, the, uh, the most obvious example to come to mind is a, is a, a um, expatriation. So a company, a, com a country that literally just took away a business or, or plant equipment from a business. So if you have investment in country that are very highly unstable, investors will require a higher return. So the amount of political risk obviously depends on the nature of the business. So the more dependent a business is on the operations within the firm, the less valuable it is to others. Meaning that even if you, if your company, if the business is just a bitch hat for distribution, then a foreign government taking over the distribution arm of a business is not as valuable as a company who has a lot of production facilities that will be more valuable to be taken over. At the extreme will be natural resources um, because uh, think of oil and gas and, um, and lumber. Um, this can be very valuable to, um, to, the, to, to, the, to the local government because 
the the majority of the investment has already been been made. Um, one way to reduce political risk is by using local financing or joint venture, because in this case, um, a local developer is is um, is exposed to the same risk as the foreign investor. So this concludes um, uh, this this module on international finance.